themes of geography discussing the region okay themes of geography so when we discuss region let's quickly go over what the definition of the region is or what it is that we would define as a region so a region is any area of that is united by uh, common characteristics okay so a region is any area that is united by common characteristics it can be an area it can be a small area or a large area as long as the people or the landforms in that area are united by common characteristics the three major types of regions that we will focus on are functional or formal regions let's go with the formal regions first I apologize formal regions functional regions and perceptual regions we will get into how the maps tie in with each region a little bit um, really shortly when I get to that point so once again the three types of regions are formal functional and perceptual all right so formal region formal regions they are defined um, by having similar physical or human characteristics so when we discuss formal regions there are places that are defined by having similar physical or human characteristics also when you think about something as a formal region let's break that word apart let's think about the word formal uh, the word formal means that something that is defined right if you think about like going to a ball or to prom yeah it's formal you have to wear a tuxedo you have to wear a certain thing same thing with the formal region a formal region is something that is defined called the uniform region they're sometimes called the uniform region and the reason that is is that with the uniform everything is the same okay so like when you guys think about the fact that you wear a uniform in school every day your uniform is supposed to look like everyone else's uniform uh, function formal re formal regions can be supported with facts defined characteristics and borders so everywhere within the formal region within that particular region they have they share certain characteristics it's factual we can check it okay so some examples of formal region of this uh, a climate zone map so make sure that you write that down okay because that word would actually not um, pop up a climate zone map everywhere and I will use this map as an example um, if you take a look at where the cursor is now or if it's not looking like a cursor on your screen it is probably looking like a yellow dot I think Everywhere where the yellow dot is, according to this map, they all experience the same characteristics, the same physical characteristics of the temperature. So everywhere that the yellow dot is right now, that is light blue. All of those places are formal regions because they all have similar characteristics. Um, for this purpose, is the similar characteristics or the temperature. Everywhere where you see is one color all the same color they are formal regions because they share characteristics that can be supported by facts in the case of this it is the temperature the next example of a formal region so the second example of a formal region would be hurricane zones so number two the second example of a uh, formal region would be hurricane zones this is a map of actually of the entire world and where it's red that indicates where hurricanes occur hurricanes and tsunamis occur throughout the world so is this a good definition or is this is this a good example of a former region yes it is because it is the places all have something in common and it can be supported by facts take a look you'll see these places um state the first region that is oh where's that cursor there it is first region that that is affected the United States, where we fall, southeastern part of the United States, the Caribbean, Central America, where the western United States, they experience tsunamis, more of the Hawaii region. Number three, looking at India, India four and five, five is actually off the southeastern coast of Africa with Madagascar, six and seven, that is all part of Australia. These are all formal regions, all of these areas that are in red, they do experience hurricanes. Um, that we can prove that with fact and the third region or the third example of a formal region is the Middle East It is a formal region because it is uniform. Okay, it can be supported with facts They're defined characteristics or borders of everywhere in the Middle East. So once again real quick Number one the first example of a formal region 
would be uh, the climate zone maps, climate places, the climate zone maps. Number two would be um, the hurricane zones. And the third one, example of a former region, would be the Middle East. That brings us to the second type of region we'll take a look at today, and that is a functional region. And so what a functional region is, that is a place centered around a focal point or a place that is defined by systems that link an area. Now, I've just given you the definition. What the heck does that mean, right? I bet that is what you're thinking. This is how I want you to think about a functional region. And you can put this in parentheses behind your notes if this helps you. A functional region is uh, any places that do business together or the, any places that are united because they do business together, okay, through business or social activities. So a functional region, let's say these, this is any place or any areas that are united because they do business together um, through business together or for social reasons. So some examples of a functional region would be uh, on this picture, the subway system. This picture is actually represents the subway system. And if you take a look at where my cursor is, this map is an example of a functional region. This is a functional region of, this is a map of Chicago, of the subway system or the elevated train system that runs in Chicago. What the elevated system does, or the elevated train system does, it unites the parts of the city. It runs from one part of the city to the other, and it also runs outside of the cities into the neighboring towns outside of the city. The different parts of the city of Chicago and the, the suburbs of the city of Chicago, where the elevated train system and their mass transit system runs, those are all functional regions because all of those places are joined together for the business of running a mass transit system. Okay. Another example for more of an entertainment issue or more of an entertainment example of a formal region would be everywhere that watches Channel 2. Okay. Everywhere that catches Channel 2, WBRZ. So the New York, so the Baton Rouge, Gonzalez area, West Baton Rouge area, Central Parish, Livingston Parish. We are all part of the functional region that catches Channel 2. <laughs> so we're all joined because we have, we catch Channel 2. That is what we have in common. We catch specifically WBRZ. And the third example of a formal region is represented by this map um, of, the city, of the metropolitan Baton Rouge. I want you to follow my cursor. That is the city of Zachary, the city of Baker. And this where this kind of would be where Central is. And this is the city of Baton Rouge. Four different cities. They all, though, work together for law enforcement and for the process of waste management. Um, and that because they work together for that business, they are would be considered a functional region. So going through those examples again, the first example of a formal region would be a subway or mass transit system. OK, a second example would be. Watching uh, everywhere who watches, who is able to catch WBRZ. And the third example of a fu uh, functional region would be any metropolitan area. Baton Rouge, Baker, Zachary, Central. They work together for the purposes of waste disposal and law enforcement. And the last type of region that we will take a look at today is a perceptual region. It's a perceptual. So that is how you say that word. Okay. The P word is perceptual. It's a perceptual region. Um, and perceptual regions are places defined by shared ideals and feelings. So once again, perceptual regions are places defined by shared ideals and feelings. They are also called vernacular regions, and that makes sense because the word vernacular actually means language. So when you think about it, a vernacular region is a place that is normally what that would break down is people who speak the same language. Um, perceptual regions are actually the opposite of formal regions because they are based on opinions rather than facts. So perceptual regions are based on feelings and opinions, while formal regions are based on facts. And. Some examples of a perceptual region is this map um, is this map. So number one, the first example is the Bible Belt. This map is of the red parts of the United States that represents the parts of the United States that are part of what are called the Bible Belt. What that means is that this is to believe to be the part of the United States where 
religion is more important. So you actually can see we're not included in that. South Louisiana, the part that includes in, in Gonzales is not included in that. Also, South Florida is not. But Texas, Louisiana, uh, northern Texas, or most of, you know, Louisiana, all those things, they are considered to be part of the Bible Belt. That is based on feelings or similar ideals and beliefs that are shared and it's an opinion right it's not a fact it's not like we can prove that religion is more important to those people um the second part is is similar to the bible belt it's this is the islam belt so the second example would be uh the islam belt these are a places around the world where it's believed that islam this map represents places around the world where it's believed that islam plays a more influential role in the daily lives of the people okay and so you see the parts that are shaded in Africa, the Middle East, and small parts of the United States and South America. The third example is near and dear to my heart, and it is represented in this picture, which I'm sure is near and dear to a lot of you guys, too, is the example of the NFL teams. What NFL teams are supported? This map represents the NFL teams that are believed to be supported by each um by the states and you'll see the state of louisiana mississippi and alabama we are um represented by the new orleans saints so we are all united in the south in the southern part of the southeastern part the gulf coast region by our shared feelings about the united states i mean i'm sorry not about the united states about the new orleans saints <laughs> so once again this is a, a a perceptual region because we in the southern part of uh, the southeastern part the gulf coast region are united by our shared feeling and love for the saints and the last part is um this last example is of africa and this is to believe to be the part of Africa that is based on the French Creole culture. That is based on the French Creole culture. So it is shared ideals, the shared French ideals. So this is a perceptual region because it represents the shared French ideals and culture. Okay. And the last example, this blue map represents the shared French ideals and culture of Africa. So once again, first example, the Bible Belt. Second example, the Islam belt. Three, the third example would be a fandom for NFL teams. And four would be, um, the fourth example would be French culture or French, uh, the sharing of French culture. All right. Now, in your homework, if you're in Mr. Sampson's class, you guys, it's not over. You actually have to answer these homework questions. So I will briefly go over it with you and you, and you can answer those questions in the space provided for you. In your notes guide, your you will not receive full credit for your homework for your homework unless these um, these questions are answered in complete sentences. So, number one, the first question is: How do physical and human characteristics give definition to a place or a region? What it's asking is: How do we, uh, how do we, our behavior? How do the fact that we the things that we like? How does that give our region an identity? Does our region is our region? Um, shaped by the things that the people who live in, in the region do. Number two, how have human activities and physical characteristics of a region lead to regional labels? I think I kind of answered number one for you. So actually, so <laughs> number two leads into number one is how have human activities and physical characteristics of a region lead to regional labels? Are there things that the people of a certain region do that cause that region to receive a certain exam, um, receive a certain label? For example, if you go back to the map from earlier for on the perceptual regions, uh, people in the southern part of the United States are considered to be the Bible Belt. These are places that people believe um, more or believe to believe the Bible or religion plays more of a part of their life. That would be an example for number two. Okay, so you have to come up with your own. And number three, Based on your notes, do you consider the South, that means the southern part of, this, of the nation, to be a region? Explain why or why not. If so, what kind of region do you consider the South to be? All right, that is it. The end. I will see you guys in class. Have a good evening.